Hello there. In this video, I'm going to be working out the answers to Worksheet 71 on chemical equilibrium. <coughs> In the first question, we're asked simply to write out chemical reaction equations with the appropriate equilibrium arrows in the equation. So in A, we have pH measurements indicate acetic acid is going to ionize, and at 1% ionizes. So our ionization reaction for acetic acid, CH3, COOH, is going to ionize into hydrogen ion and the acetate ion, CH3COO, negative 1. And we make sure that it is a balanced, which it is, one of each. And since it is an equilibrium reaction, we put the arrow in both directions, and it tells us that the reaction happens only 1%, so I write the 1% on top. Next, we're looking at part B. Quantitative analysis of the reaction shows that so of the reaction of sodium sulfate. So we have sodium sulfate reacting with calcium chloride, BaCO2. And it is going to be a double displacement reaction. So we will produce sodium chloride. And we will be producing calcium sulfate. All of these would be in an aqueous environment. To balance that, we need a 2 in front. And they tell us that the products are going to be favored. If the products are favored, then that's still in equilibrium, but you get more of the products. That tells us, in a way, that we are going to need to have greater than 50% equilibrium, or reaction occurring. Part C, aluminum sulfate. Aluminum is a plus 3 ion, sulfate is a minus 2. So aluminum sulfate reacts quantitatively with sodium hydroxide. And if it reacts quantitatively, then that means that it goes to completion, meaning that it is completely consumed, the reactants or reagents, and the products are all that you would find. And so you would have aluminum hydroxide and sodium sulfate. Okay, so balancing our equation here, we're going to need two aluminums. That would give us six OHs, so we need a six in front of our sodium. Six sodium means we need a three there, and we're all good to go. Now we'll move on to number two. Chlorine and carbon monoxide are mixed in a one liter container, and the following equilibrium is established. So we have to write the equilibrium law for this reaction. Our equilibrium law is going to be the products, the concentration of our products, COCl2, divided by the concentration of the reactants, carbon monoxide and chlorine gas. That's all of our reaction. Then we are going to calculate it. So in B, that equilibrium, this is our concentration. Because it was in a one liter container, that was the volume of our container, then that tells you that each of the moles that are given are actually concentrations in moles per liter. So our carbon monoxide concentration is 1.75 moles per liter. And 0.7 moles of chlorine were present, so 0 0.7 moles of chlorine. And we need to know what our concentration of COCl2, and that's 0.8 moles. So we have 0 0.80 moles per liter there. So we will bring up our trusty calculator and ascertain uh, 0.8 divided by 1.75 times 0.7 gives us 0.653 as our answer. We will leave K unitless because it can be a number of different units, moles per liter, one over moles per liter, etc., as we go. Number three, write the equilibrium law for each of these. Again, a similar expression to what we wrote before. The products, SO3, because there's a two here, it means that there are two of them multiplied together, so we have them squared. SO2 is one of the reactants, and again, there are two of them, so it is squared. and oxygen. For part B, you take your products, 
nitrogen monoxide squared concentration of oxygen divide by concentration of nitrogen dioxide squared. Thirdly, we have concentration of NH3 squared over concentration of nitrogen and concentration of hydrogen cubed, oops, hydrogen gas cubed. That would be that third expression. Getting to the end of our sheet, Question four, in an experiment at high temperature, 0.5 moles of hydrogen bromide is placed into a container and decomposes. Hydrogen bromine gas decomposes into its elements, which is hydrogen and bromine gas. Now that is an unbalanced equation, and now it is a balanced equation. Now we need to write our equilibrium law for this. We know that the concentration of bromine times the concentration of hydrogen, divide by the concentration of hydrogen bromide squared, will give us our answer. Our concentrations of bromine and hydrogen are each 0 0.130, and our concentration of hydrogen bromide is given as 0.24, and we square that, run to our calculator, and we want 0.13 squared over 0.24 squared gives us 0.293 approximately would be our value for K. And that would be all the questions from your sheet. I hope you enjoy your day.